Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. This is, as always, Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Today we've got four decks for you as our 10,000 subscriber anniversary celebration continues. We're going to go over some more giveaways, places you can win free season passes and gold passes, including this very video. But before we go further, I want to let you know we have some tournaments. The Snap Grand Prix is happening on 427 and 428. The Swiss round, the round that everyone plays in is 427, and then we cut to a playoffs, a cut on the 28th. It is completely free to enter with at least $300 in prizes. That prize pool may be going up an awful lot. You will see very soon we got some stuff a cooking. We are also hosting a fight club tonight at 8 p.m. It's a $5 buy in cash tournament. Winner takes home a bunch of money, second place takes home a bunch of money. If you'd like to compete in that tournament in Marvel Snap, please check out our. Um, check out our discord we also host regular king of the hell tournaments where you have to be a one dollar patreon and they have these happen multiple times weekly and most importantly going live today is snap judgments league season two last season we had 250 members including over 60 freaking content creators we have expanded that tournament we'll have all the details for you all about that in either sunday or monday's video but for now just get on the patreon one dollar and you are eligible to be a member of the snap judgments league which comes with not only the ability to play some of your favorite content creators but also the ability to um i mean win season passes win raffles for great prizes we did dan hip um specific prints as raffles we gave a season pass to every winner of a pod we've got a grand prize and we've got a tournament video for the end of season one coming very soon all right our first deck is spires deck this is spires 89 percent win rate deck that you saw from the thumbnail um these are spiros specific stats not everyone's stats he went like 32 and 4 which is just stupid um other people have played this deck we'll talk about those stats later this deck is brilliant it's just fantastic this is absolutely everything I envisioned when they changed Lady Deathstrike, and um, I immediately said, I was like, oh, it's an Annihilus card now. Um, Ava found another really great home for it without Annihilus in that deck that runs both um, Man-Thing and U.S. Agent with Valkyrie to make Deathstrike good, but most of the time when you see Lady Deathstrike, what you're seeing is a Annihilus deck, which it worked great in. It's also really, really solid for... Um, like stopping Iron Man and decks that have specifically bad matchups, Red Guardian really helps with that as well. This deck also runs a nice disruptive package of Spider Ham and Iceman, while it runs Pixie in order to, well, with Coulson, in order to say sometimes you just get that stupidly cheap Red Hulk, stupidly cheap Annihilus Sentry Death Strike, and you can pull off absolutely insane combos and steal wins you have no business winning. It also makes your snaps so dangerous, and this has a huge cube rate because it's so hard to stay against. All right, you can find Spyro at twitch.tv slash Spyro underscore ZA. Make sure you check out Spyro. Like, you probably know Spyro. He has, like, 70 freaking thousand subs, and he's a top ladder player. He's He floats around. This deck got into the top 20 on the infinite leaderboard. He floats around the um, top 10 to top 30 general area. Genuinely excellent and stellar player. He's also booked for the podcast in July, so you have something to look forward to. So Sparrow went 32 and 4, 89%. In well over a thousand games, this has a 59% win rate, which means it's successful for not just expert players like Sparrow, but the masses. And a cable variant, which has cable for Red Guardian. You can run a cable there, you can run a Maximus, you can run kind of whatever you want in that extra spot. Um, you can run a Lizard there, whatever. Um, that extra card in that spot, that's got a 73% win, win rate in 50 games. This is a real deck. This is a real meta deck that you need to know and you need to get ready for. It's not the secret deck from the thumbnail, as you can tell by the 1,000 games. We'll talk about that later. Um, that is actually the last deck of the video. I'm going to make you wait for it. Den sent it to me, and I'll explain why I'm making you wait for it. Uh, Korg works if no Ham or Nico. If you have neither, I don't mind Wasp because you have the... Um, shenanigans you can do with wasp with pixie and that helps nightcrawler is always for jeff if you have jeff but not the others i might go nightcrawl over wasp whatever um red hulk is always magneto but you should probably have red hulk it's the most important card in the game uh two of the four decks today have red hulk so it's not an all red hulk day pixie mobius and annihilus are all necessary and look i didn't call mobius colson so um anyone who had that on their bingo card for today i'm really sorry all right so Iceman is better than Hood, is better than Ham, and you Nico when it's right, you'll know when it's right. If you can turn a Pixie into a Demon or Pixie into Draw 2, it's right. Cool? Um, or if you can get rid of a Hood, etc., etc. 
So Pixie is generally better than two ones, is generally better than Jeff early. Jeff has extra value late, obviously. Turn three, Mobius or Red Guardian. If you have really great Red Guardian target, drop Red Guardian. Um, if not, it's Mobius. Turn four, Sentry or a combo of cheaper stuff. Turn five, Annihilus or Death Strike. And turn six, Annihilus, Death Strike or Red Hulk. And then obviously if you Pixie and have different costs, that shakes things up. All good? This is how you start to play this deck. This deck is completely sick. I love it. Um... I strongly urge you, if you have the cards for it, to give it a play. Um, it is not a cheap deck, but of the expensive cards, you only really need um, Annihilus and Pixie and kind of Death Strike. So, like, this is workable without a lot of the expensive cards. Please hit that sub, like, and comment button. We just hit 10,000 subs. We are trying to grow as much as we can to bring you the best content and support the Marvel Snap community. Ask literally anyone. Read the comments. We do more to support the Marvel Snap game and community than anyone. We are trying to grow by providing you the very best value in the game, so hopefully you are willing to help us by hitting that sub button, hitting that like, and leaving us a comment, and watching more. Let's talk about some giveaways that will hopefully keep you here and watching, where you will learn to love the channel. We've got a gold pass scavenger hunt thing. So Interabang should have a tweet live right now that you can interact with. Savage 80 Gaming has a YouTube video that came out this morning, as does Docty Snap. Tonight on Twitch is Call Me Sal. We'll have a gold pass to give away as well. It's just re and paper. All three on Twitch tonight. Tomorrow night, Lufku9 on Twitch. And Monday, the Pirate King himself, Tucker, is giving away a gold pass on stream. All those gold passes for us. We're trying to get you more involved in the Marvel Snap community, showing you more great Marvel Snap content creators. Go check out these great streams, YouTube videos, and tweet in order to potentially get a gold pass on me, um, if you're willing. Cool. Oh, sorry. There's also like seven or eight more that are already live. Um, as far as gold passes go, they're in yesterday's video. I didn't want to just keep repeating myself, so check yesterday's video. We also have, you can win a season pass on this video in the comments. Every day in the comments, you're commenting something different in order to be potentially win a season pass. If you already have the season pass, that will just roll over into a gold pass. Um, if you already have the gold pass, it'll just lengthen the amount of time that you get the gold pass. Just so you know, that's how it works. Um, what I'd like you to comment today, and this is, I mean, if you're new here, you can just say, hi, I'm new here. New here is fine. But if you are not new here, comment what you'd like to see more or less of in on the channel. We've covered freaking everything at this point. So what do you like? What do you not like that we do here on the channel? Let me know in the comments to enter for a season pass today. We also have this giveaway of um, for making a custom card. That is part of Drew Berry's Discord. You need to join Drew Berry's Discord to participate. But two winners of a custom card um, for JRPG characters will win a gold pass as well. All right, our next deck is Dubos and Gnome. Um, this is called Tech Abuser. Um, it is a stellar, stellar deck. Again, like, the decks, the deck builders in this community are completely on freaking fire lately because the game opened up after Thanos. There's all these combo decks that are whatever, but it sort of opened up after Thanos besides, and this is a really stellar deck. Um, it basically says, I've got Ronin, that's big. The Annihilus package is really strong. Red Hulk is really strong. Um, and I've got all the scalers, and I still have room for a little bit of tech. A little bit of tech is usually enough to win. In particular, Cosmo is nasty right freaking now. All right, you can find Dubos on twitch.tv slash Dubos, and you should definitely go check him out. But I also want to give a special shout out to Gnome Plays, twitch.tv slash Gnome Plays, two underscores between the two. Gnome is going to be huge. I'm completely convinced. He's like a top 30-ish player in Marvel Snap. Really, really excellent person, really hard worker, and really great at the game. Um, every one I've said that's going to be huge has like sort of blown up, and I'm pretty sure Gnome's going to be huge. Go get it on the ground floor, floor and check out Gnome Plays. Dubos is also wonderful, but unfortunately, due to time limits, I've only seen Dobo stream like twice, so I'm not going to tell you he's going to be great. I really do enjoy him, and you should check him out. But like, whatever you're doing, go check out Gnome. Cool? All right. Um, Jeff can be Nightcrawler, and Hulk can be Magneto. Kitty, Hope, and Annihilus are needed. Um, the Kitty, so in, at this point, Kitty, um, Angela, and Hope are a package. Sometimes you run Elsa in that. But this deck really does want that extra hope because it wants that extra energy. Because at the end of the game, honestly, if you're going to play a five, having the ability to play like a kitty and a demon is huge. Having the ability to drop a Maximus is huge, etc. Uh, if you can go Ronin and Maximus on the last turn of the game, just like... Poof. All right. Um, so this is in the top. Um, this got... Um, blah, blah, blah. This got Gnome into the top 20. 
So turn one could hood is over kitty. Unless you already have Angela, then I will prioritize it. Kitty. Uh, turn two, Angela is better than two ones. Is generally better than Jeff. Is generally than Maximus. If you have nothing else, if you have nothing that you've played, turn one or turn two, I will play Maximus. But other than that, I'm saving it for later. Turn three, Hope over Cosmo over Angela and Kitty. Uh, turn four, I'd like Cosmo's a potential late play too, just for the record. Turn four, Sentry, if you have Annihilus or Cosmo out. Um, Sentry on Cosmo is perfectly fine if you're not planning on playing any of that game. Turn five, Ronin or Annihilus. And turn six, Red Hulk or Spread Power with Max, Cosmo, and Kitty, or Ronin and Maximus are also great. And that's a ton of freaking power that you just dropped all over the board of Marvel Snap. Um, not the most disruptive thing in the world, though it has a little bit of disruption in the Annihilus package, but a lot of power. All right. Friday thoughts. This is my, the point where I tell you whether you should buy Red Guardian. Uh, my final decision will, as always, be Monday, but weekend missions are coming. So, um, bluntly, Red Guardian should have released as like a Series 3 card, not a Series 4 card, a Series 3 card. It's a tech card, and tech cards should always be lower series because tech cards are how people with lower collection levels compete in the game. That he's a Series 5 card is a severe disservice to um, Marvel Snap's consumers. That is a concern I'm raising internally as well. I promise I don't like it at all. That said, is it worth 6,000 tokens given the place we are? No. If it were Series 4, I'd probably... Um, recommend you get it but as a series five card i think that there are other series five cards that are more impactful um this is a tech card and tech cards can be hugely impactful in marvel snap right both um mobius and shang chi are two of the most impactful cards ever in marvel snap mobius needs to go to series three by the way and i would bet you he will in the next um next series drop whenever the hell that'll be i think it should be soon but who knows um so we have Red Guardian, then, as the kind of tech card that Shadow King is, that um, that Enchantress is, that Rogue is, where it can fit a deck, but there are other options that do similar enough things in different matchups that you're more or less okay. So I don't suggest you get him, not because he's not great, because he is, but because he is replaceable while being great. There's never going to be a deck, I strongly doubt there will ever be a deck, where like when I build a deck and I go, These, this Series 5 card isn't replaceable, that that un irreplaceable Series 5 card is going to be Red Guardian. You just slot in a card like Shadow King and you're more or less okay. There are places where he's better than Shadow King, there's places where he's worse, obviously, but you're not in a lurch without him. So I think he's a skip. However, if you're getting him regardless, because he is very good, these are going to be some of the homes. We're going to do one Zemo deck. We've had a million Zemo decks. He should not be in weekend missions until next week. Next week, he'll be in weekend missions, and we'll start worrying more about this. Um, because if you didn't know, weekend missions aren't including Zemo, but they are going to in the last two weekends of the month, and they're going to give the same amount of gold as if it was every week, just so you don't have to keep playing the same damn deck. Um, you need two more Red Guardian decks. Um, there are a ton of Red Guardian decks for the past couple of days. He's, again, better and more complete than we thought. But we've got one, two Red Guardian decks, one with the full guide, and one deck with both. I haven't liked the Surfer deck that runs Red Guardian and um, Zemo, so I didn't bother sharing that. But, like, I think that um, there's another good deck that has both. Okay, this is Den's Baron Zemo list, or one of the lists that Den shared. Um, it puts up a good amount of points, right? Like, this is a deck that says... I've got a mill package, and I want to put up points. This kind of mid rangey thing, I think, is kind of what Zemo wants to do. Uh, the Valkyrie helps you mitigate if you don't get the thing you want. I straight up don't love magic in these lists, but this is a reasonably high win percentage deck that runs all of the above cards. The Stature Black Bolt thing can really, really help you win games. Cool. Next up, we have Brad Sefer's Guardian. Brad Sefer has a full gameplay with this... Um, deck video on his stream if you want to check that out please feel free i know guest played it on stream earlier and i think gregor did too so i have no idea how they did with it to be perfectly honest but bradsifer had a lot of success and bradsifer on youtube has a full video that i urge you to check out in fact i'll go so far as to say if you go leave a comment and say glazer sent me i'll throw uh i'll pick a winner and throw a gold pass someone's way for that too see we snuck an extra giveaway in there we always do all right, so Brad Sefer has this Guardian deck. Um, it's really, really solid. It's a Sarah Miracle, Toxic Miracle deck. If you're not seeing a ton of loot cage, this is stellar. Um, I don't love Maximus. I think I would generally prefer either um, Angela or um, blah, the name of card, or Scarlet Witch because there's so much magic in the meta right now. Uh, not magic, 
Yeah, so there's so much magic in the meta, I'd prefer Scarlet Witch. But given that that's not a card... Ooh, wrong button, sorry. Given that's not a card that really exists, um, that's not on the list. Hey, this is Ratsifer's version, and it worked great. Maximus is great on the last turn after Asara, obviously. So this deck does a lot of really powerful things. If you have um, US Asian, this is a very obvious US Asian spot. But yep, yeah, this is a very powerful list that has a lot of tech in it and then and can compete on points by bringing opponents down to its size. Very cool list. Props to Bradsfer. Go watch him play it and win a gold pass. All right, uh, Baron Zemo, Red Guardian. So Zemo's got this Red Guardian list. Um, yeah, blah, blah. Zemo's got this Red Guardian list. Excuse me. This is the list that is most successful with both of them. I was thinking about Bradsfer for a second. Please excuse me. So this is the list that... Uh, that is running both Red Guardian and Zemo that I think is best. It's very strong. It basically does the mill package and uses Red Guardian as an extra tech card to get that Lady Death Strike off. This is exactly the kind of deck I'm talking about that I'd like that I like to play and would like to see more of for Zemo. I think people are sort of overdoing it with what they're doing with the card otherwise. This that runs tech and runs powerful cards is a really effective way to run the card. As always, Maximus remains a swing card because you don't want to play him on two and you're not always sure you can play him to end the game. Although um, you're seeing a lot of Maximus and Shang-Chi decks right now because two six is the best you can do with Shang-Chi at the end of the game to steal a game of Snap. All right, and this is the deck we're going to cover. This is Safety Blade's Slayer Blade. This is a beautiful Red Guardian deck that I watch Safety play on stream uh, to great effect. I think this is really cool and really powerful. It is not a cheap deck, unfortunately, and it's not a cheap deck in ways that, like, have cards that everyone doesn't have in that Havoc Series 4. Not everyone has. It is, luckily, though, outside of Red Guardian, I think, uh, Cannonball most of the things that are required are lower series. So Nebula here can be Sunspot, you lose a bit, but it's not the end of the world. Kitty and Angela and Hope are a required package, um, as always. Hopefully you bought Hope. I begged people to buy Hope and give, did like a bunch extra giveaways to get people Hope. Hope is a requirement for so many decks. Havoc, Ravon, and Cannonball are also needed. Uh, Guardian can be Rogue or Shadow King. All right, Safety is still a genius. In case anyone forgot, Safety is a freaking phenomenal deck builder who plays things no one else does. Turn one, Nebula over Kitty. Turn two, Ravona over Angela over Jeff. Turn three, Hope is better than Kitty. Angela is better than Goblin. It is more or less equal to Red Guardian. Depends what the board is. If you've got an Angela, um, obviously, there's a lot of extra value to that Goblin at that point. Turn four, Professor X if you can. If not, you do one of the turn three plays and add extra energy as you can. And turn five, X if you can with Havoc, obviously, if you have Ravona then. If not, you flood the board by playing a bunch of things. And then turn six, you win because Cannonball is completely insane. And one of the best cards in Marvel Snap called it. We love this deck. You should play this deck. It's also like, if they're, man, if the X-Men event were active, we've got uh, Kitty, Wolfsbane, Professor X, Cannonball, and Havoc. We'd be going to town. Okay, I know it's later than usual. We're doing questions of the day. I was only going to do three decks, and then Den sent me a deck, the secret deck, that I feel like I have to talk about, like, immediately. So Ryan Sindeldecker wants to know how to counter the mill meta, and the answer is pretty simple. Don't play combo. Um, mill kills combo, but it's not especially great against decks like Loki or decks like Bounce or, like, your general mid rangey stuff that's running cards like Annihilus. It doesn't do much to those decks because they're playing a bunch of regular stuff and losing one or two cheaper cards doesn't usually be break the deck. Mill is amazing against combo decks and can roll those, but against regular old decks, it's fine, but not that great. Matthew Payne asks how I got into Marvel Snap. Um, I really like Marvel is step one. My friend Chris Lavin, who, um, who was a host of the podcast when it started and then sort of stopped being as into the game, Played it, and Lavin and I have a lot of the same tastes. We both love basketball. We both love um, JRPGs. We both love comics. We have very, very similar tastes. Roy was picking it up, and I love Marvel, and I didn't really have a card game. I had stopped playing Magic because it was expensive and like it felt like a job more than anything else in order to be like even halfway decent at it, and I wasn't enjoying that feeling. And then I played Storybook Brawl, but they sold out to NFTs, and I'm not a big NFT fan. If you are, more power to you, but I'd rather not invest in your NFT game. Thank you. So I stopped playing Storybook Brawl, and I had nothing. I was just playing video games, and I was like, I would like another card game. And Snap came out, and the games were fast, and the Series 1 and 2 is brilliantly designed if you don't remember series one and two of marvel snap are a glorious time they are brilliant design and i got into it and then 
a little while later, well, that story has been chronicled elsewhere, but Roy and I decided to do a podcast with Chris, and then shortly thereafter, hi, a video a day. All right, Jinx asks if SD is releasing too many cards too quickly. Nope, not even a little bit. They are releasing too few cards. Part of the problem right now is that there's not enough to do in the game. Uh, the only thing to do in the game is play new cards, and that they're gating so many new cards means it feels like there's not a lot to do in the game. They need more modes or more different things that are created, like, um, not for everyone, but those, like, specific, like, modes where, like, you get access to all the X-Men, you, but you can only play X-Men for this weekend in this specific mode. That kind of nonsense goes a long way to offering the game variety and different things to do, a draft mode, something. The only thing to do that's not just the same thing as last week, outside of all the patches and OTAs, is play with new cards, is see how the meta develops. So they need to release cards more quickly so that there are more things to do. Someone asked me what Curve is. I lost the name. I saw the question, but like when I went to look for the name, it wasn't showing up in my recent uh, questions. So what is a Curve? A Curve is how the cost balances out. Generally speaking, you want a few one drops, like two one drops, one to two one drops, if any, and then one to two six drops. And you want to fill out a curve of a deck by having more things in the middle because, well, that gives you more things to do in a game while well, that's how the power works, right? You can run, it's how many of each cost you run in order to maximize the energy efficiency of your deck. There are decks that break a curve. That's what cards like a lockjaw would do, where you'd want to run cheaper cards and then um, expensive cards to pop out of Lockjaw, and then you would ignore the middle of the curve except for Lockjaw. Get it? Middle of the curve, middle of the cost. And there are cards... Excuse me, I'm so sorry. And there are decks like Hella, which ignore the low end to run one or two ramp cards in the middle, ramp being ways to get out bigger things before you're supposed to, in order to be able to play expensive things. Most decks don't do that. Things like the Mill deck, aforementioned, uh, the Darkhawk deck, most of the decks we feature or not combo decks are not uh, decks that play altered curves they're decks that play on curve as according to how much energy you have with the cost one drops are not especially important on curve but two drops are decks often have the most two drops of any other spot dj now asks what my drake versus kendrick take is so i don't know enough about any of these people personally to know the take but i know that kendrick's music is something i really enjoy and drake's music is something i don't enjoy and i know that drake has been accused multiple times of grooming and i don't know how true that is but as a teacher i'm not a fan of that shit at all so team kendrick all the way i like the music way better and as far as i know he's not a giant creep so go kendrick if you'd like your questions right out in Sunday's video, please leave some in the comments. All right, Den's Secret. This is the deck that made me go back and have to redo this uh, video. So this is brilliant. It's not super consistent. It requires booting. It requires patience. But its cube rate, according to Marvel Snap Zone stats internally, is the best in the game right now. Cool. We have to talk about it then. This deck combines two things. It's got the ongoing Tribunal combo, and it's got the Phoenix Force combo. Then it says, if I get either of these combos off, I win, and I can combine them in some weird ways. So you can only change Lad for Jubilee here. I don't think you can really change anything else. You don't really want to change Lad for Jubilee, but it is doable if you absolutely need to. Boop. All right, basically how to play. Turn one is always a pass, unless you have Nico on draw two. Turn two torture multiple man turn three you eat it or play magic turn four phoenix cosmo or magic if you get that phoenix off and then you can play magic after on turn five or um you're just in heaven um cosmo is perfectly fine on turn four and magic is a card you really really want to play in this deck turn five iron man on um, that cosmo or on a random phoenix or um, you can play Phoenix if you've got Magic out. That's the last turn. That's acceptable. If you've got that Human Torch, Phoenix on turn four, and you're moving it around, you want to make sure you get Cosmo down because you want to make sure Human Torch ends in that Cosmo lane so that you can spread the, spread the power with Tribunal and not be at all at risk because of, um, because of Shang-Chi. Cool. Turn six Onslaught, turn seven Tribunal. 
you don't care about tribunal usually if you're doing the multiple man game plan you definitely don't care about onslaught if you're doing the multiple man game plan but for the torch game plan tribunal is pivotal and obviously if you're just going to go magic cosmo iron man onslaught tribunal you're in really great shape and if you know your opponent's not running enchantress or whatever nonsense you can skip the cosmo and just try it for an iron lad for an extra high roll iron lad is your um, filler to see what extra stuff you can pull off y'all good this deck is phenomenal. It's not going to win a thousand percent of games, but no one's going to know what you're doing and you're going to get a bajillion cubes. So if you're good at like negative or tribunal or whatever, you need to try this list because this is officially a list in Marvel Snap that you need to know. I stuck it at the end of the video because I want as few people to know about it as possible because I don't want to play against this shit. This feels like a nightmare to play against. But this deck is sick. Please try it out, lo dear loyal viewers. Let me know what you think of it in the comments too. Cool. All right, certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with on air. Thanks. That's the $10 tier. If you're interested in joining the $10 tier, Roy and I also did an hour and a half podcast that is on the $10 tier right now. That podcast discusses Drew Barry's Is Marvel Snap Fun video, where we talk a ton about the state of Marvel Snap, the monetization, all those other things. I'm really proud of the content. Look, it's a wide range of conversation. We also have some fun with it, but I'm really, really proud of that piece of content. I strongly urge you to check it out. And if you have any, any interest, I think it's worth the $10 all on its own. I'll also have an exclusive video of the top 10 decks we covered this week on the Patreon up probably tomorrow, but maybe Saturday or Sunday. All right, our Patreons that we're thanking are Abigail Geeslin, Mandatory Burnout, Cables, we miss you, Cables, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Fathor Newman, check him out on YouTube, He's giving away one of the gold passes. Good Dog Gamer, Inc., Jay Navarrete, J.D. McDonaldino, who streams but needs to stream more, Caretakes Lee, Koi Ray, Pyrophoros, The Goat Seeker, Den Man Falcon, YouTube Bud, Doku, Philip Ratkovich, Phenomenal Player, Mod, helps us with the league, Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, Juan Diego Labed, The Biza, not the Jizza, The Biza, X Force V, Skippy G, Tommy Noy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kev Sihota, Mod Supreme Models, Spectrumix, Hoot, Matt H, DJ Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, Ah Hilaris, Craig Sterry, Pretty Chill, Hi Seamus, Spike Jones, check him on YouTube too, Two Ties, The Pirate King, Tucker, The Homie Man, and of course, Gunny T where the T stands for. The podcast is with Den tomorrow. Don't miss it. All right, that's it. We're done for today. I got to go to bed. It's late. We recorded the podcast with Den. We did the top 10 decks. We had a freaking blast. I'm so proud of the content for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, hope you've all enjoyed it. I appreciate each and every one of you who watched, especially those who watched this far. See ya. Peace.